Until now, we've mainly talked about uncertainty in absolute terms. So if we write things like x plus or minus delta x, this is the absolute uncertainty. It's, uh, it's the uncertainty in units of x. So if, if x is a length, is a length, then delta x also has units of length. Um, now there's another way in which we can um, write this uncertainty. Instead of an absolute uncertainty, we can write a relative uncertainty. So the relative uncertainty is dx over the absolute value of x. So this is um, going to be a, a unitless or dimensionless quantity. Um, and actually, it, it will often, often make sense um, to express it as a, a percentage. Um, other ways in which we term this is a fractional uncertainty or even just precision. And uh, remember, this is different than when we talked about precise measurements um, although, of course, there, there's some relation there, um, but uh, uh, precision um, in terms of, uh, of measurements is different, different from the precision of um, an uncertainty over the central value. So let's say um, with an example, we have uh, a, a, a number that's, uh, you know, let's say that x is, uh, or our measurement is um, 50 plus or minus 2. So what's the relative uncertainty or the precision here? It's 2 over 50, um, or uh, actually, uh, just pick the different, uh, different um, let's do this. Let's just start over again. Um, let's assume we've listed, um, that, uh, so there's a connection between um, the fractional uncertainty and the significant figures. Um, so let's say we have a value 20 that's just listed there um, and uh, um, it, it's just listed with these significant figures. So what we can say is that this actually means if those are the significant figures it's really 20 plus or minus 1. So if this is 20 plus or minus 1 then the, um, the relative uncertainty of that value is 1 over 20 or 5%, 0.05, right? So this is a 5% precision measurement because 1 is 5% of 20. Now if we have another value, 50, which also is given in the same number of significant figures, one, uh, two significant figures, so the uncertainty there is also um, one. Now this will have a relative uncertainty that's one over 50 or that is 2%. So these, th this is one of the problems or one of the, the tricky aspects of, um, of uh, using significant figures. If we have, let's say 10 plus or minus one or we have 99 plus or minus one in each case, there's two significant figures. There's the same uncertainty, but we'll start from 1 over 10, a 10% 10 precision or relative uncertainty until we get to a 1 over 99 or a 1% relative precision. So the relative precision for numbers that are, um, that are written in terms of uh, their significant figures actually varies depending on um, on the value that uh, that 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 you see, um, and you can actually exploit this because typically uh, significant figures is how you see numbers on digital displays uh, or digital measurement devices. So if you have something that has a has a limited number um, of digits that it can show, if you make sure that the number that it shows is actually larger you'll get a smaller relative uncertainty um, for that same measurement. So you get a better precision 
for a higher value with the same number of significant figures. So why are these uh, relative uncertainties important? Well, we talked already about the, um, the, uh, the absolute uncertainty, or we called it then just the uncertainty, um, the uncertainty on the difference between two numbers, right? The uncertainty on um, x minus y was the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, right? So remember that. So now we'll talk about the uncertainty on a product of numbers. Uncertainty on uncertainty on um, the product is x times y. So we can write this, the product plus minus dp with the uncertainty. Um, so that will be x plus or minus dx times y plus or minus dy. I call it dy, dx, or delta y, delta x. Um, of course, there's no difference. Um, so we can write this now in terms of relative uncertainties. So we can pull out the x and the y to the front. We get 1 plus minus dx over x. And we'll just assume for the sake of argument that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. Uh, so we don't have to add any minus signs there. And then here we get y which we pulled out to the front. So we get one plus or minus delta y over y. If we now multiply everything together, x, y, um, if we ignore quadratic terms, we get one plus or minus dx over x plus or minus dy over y. And now if we divide everything, uh, if we write p plus or minus delta p over x, y, which really is um, the product, is it, which will give us 1 plus the relative, 1 plus minus the relative uncertainty of dp over p. That will be what's in parentheses here. So 1 plus or minus dx over x plus dy over y. So what you'll see now is that the relative uncertainty, or what you see here is that the relative uncertainty on the product is related to the sum of the relative uncertainties um, on, the, on the individual factors. And of course, the same thing here is that this is preliminary and we'll come back to that. And of course, we'll find out that this is wrong and that dp over p is really the square root of, oops, of, dx over x squared plus dy over y squared, pretty much in the same way that um, uh, that the expression for uh, um, the absolute uncertainty of a sum or a difference is constructed. Um, but this will be something that we have to come back to uh, in, uh, in our discussion when we talk about Gaussian uncertainties and interpretation as a normal distribution. Uh, but for now, let's just remember that these relative uncertainties, which are the absolute uncertainty divided by the measured value or the best estimate, um, those are unitless and can often be described as a percentage um, and, uh, and, and are quoted uh, as such. So if, if someone says, I made a 2% measurement of, of value so-and-so, um, then that means that the relative uncertainty is 2%.